Melanie's not. The Civil War is his passion, and in his free time, he writes books about specific battles or key individuals of the war. One day, Melanie confided in a friend that she had been unhappy for years because Don didn't make enough money to provide vacations or the nice things that she wanted or beautiful new furnishings for their house or a great wardrobe. Most of the time when Melanie complained, her friends would commiserate with her and tell her, yes, you do deserve nicer things. You know, sometimes we don't love a person like we should be loving them if all we do is agree with them and feel sorry for them. Now listen, but her friend this time said, Don is not responsible for your happiness, Melanie. <laughs> Don loves his work. He's not interested in becoming rich. He's 60 years old. You do the math. Don doesn't want to change anything. If you want to be happy, you'd better figure out what you can do about it because your happiness is not Don's job. <laughs> Six years later, Melanie's friend wrote to her and told her, I'm so glad that you showed me tough love. Now, six years went by, and I'm sure the friend that maybe kind of told her off thought, well, that's probably the end of that, and she's mad at me, and so on and so forth, but she said, I'm so grateful that you showed me tough love. I began to take responsibility for my happiness. My marriage has never been better. Not only that, but I've discovered that I'm a playwright and I've been writing plays and they're actually being performed in local theaters around town. <laughs> See, what happens when you're waiting for somebody else to make you happy? You never fulfill what's inside of you because God has put something in you that will make you happy if you'll begin to take responsibility for your own happiness. And I was really bad about that for a long time. I was like, well, if Dave would do this, and if Dave would do that, na, 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 na. and God spoke this to me before I ever had a book like this to read. Dave is not responsible for your happiness. And he sure was glad when I took that job away from him. <laughs> Come on, look at me. Nobody else is responsible for your joy. You need to decide that you're gonna have joy. How many of you need to form a happy habit? <laughs> okay, praise the Lord. Let's see what habits we got left. How many have I done? You need to laugh more and think less. <laughs> Laughter is an instant vacation. <laughs> Amen. Now, last thing I want to talk to you about today is the habit of faith. You say the habit of faith, I want to tell you something. Believing, just simply deciding that you're going to believe God, that you're going to believe his word, that you're going to believe that he loves you, believe that he's taken care of you, just deciding to believe does such amazing things in your soul. The Bible says in Hebrews 4, those who have believed do enter the rest of God. And there's a lot of things the Bible tells us not to strive over, but it does tell us to strive to enter the rest of God. So that means in every situation that I'm in, the best way that I can get relief from worry or anxiety or fear or tension or stress or anything else is just to believe. I had to learn to do that even when I'm preaching. Sometimes I'd be preaching and somebody would be fidgeting around, looking at their watch, yawning. Two or three people would get up and leave and all of a sudden I'd start thinking, oh, this message must be terrible. They don't like my preaching. And I mean, I would just start going down the drain. And God began to show me, if you don't maintain your confidence when you're in that pulpit, you're going to give the meeting to the devil. You have to be confident. And you can't wait to feel confident. You have to be confident. We're going to talk more about that on Saturday morning, about the, ha the confident habit. But you go, the Bible says in Romans 1, 17, that in the Word, in the, in the Gospel, there's a righteousness revealed that leads us from faith to faith to faith. If you guys have it, can you put up Romans 1, 17 for us so everybody can see this? In the Gospel, there's a righteousness revealed for in the gospel, a righteousness which God ascribes is revealed, both springing from faith and leading to faith, disclosed through the way of faith that arouses to more faith. I love that. 
So in the Bible, there's a righteousness, a right standing with God that's revealed. Now, if you don't know that right standing with God, you're not gonna be, have, you're not gonna be able to have this kind of faith because you're gonna think that everything in your life is dependent on you, but it's not. It's all dependent on the grace of God coming to you and you receive that grace through faith. If you've sinned, you don't have to do something to pay back now for your sin. What you need to do is say, I believe that God will forgive me if I ask him. I receive that forgiveness. There's no condemnation because the Bible says there's no condemnation. God still loves me, I'm still right with God, and that enables you to just have faith that everything's gonna work out right in your life. You say, well, what happens if I believe, let, let's just say, I believe for something and I just don't get it. Well, then keep believing anyway. Just keep believing. Just say, I'm not gonna stop believing. I may not get it the way that I want it, I may not get it the way that I thought it was gonna be, but I'm gonna keep believing. I don't have to believe for something. I need to believe in somebody. There's a difference. We've always got this thing that we're believing for. Well, you know what? There's a faith that's so much greater than believing for something, and it's a faith that believes in someone, and especially when you don't get the thing that you're expecting to get. Come on, we need to understand that God is smarter than we are, and he knows better than we do what we need. And thank God that he won't give us what we want, but he'll make us wait until we're smart enough to receive what he says is gonna be the best for us. When you, when you trust God, listen, I ask God for all kinds of stuff. And a lot of my prayers are answered right away. Some of them aren't. Some of the things I've asked for, I've never gotten, and I've seen other people get them. And I, I just have to trust God. If that's what I was supposed to have, then you would have given it to me. Don't look at other people and be jealous. Don't look at other people and be envious. Just say to yourself, God loves me. I am in right standing with God. That righteousness has been revealed to me through the word. God would never hold out on me because I'm the apple of his eye. He has his eye on me all the time. And he would not hold out on me. He would not keep any blessing from me. Maybe you don't understand what God's doing right now. There was a lot of things I did not understand what God was doing, but I look back now and I understand it. Sadly, we live life forward, but we understand it backward. You know, when we're going toward things, we're like, what is going on? I don't understand. This makes no sense. This is so hard. And then you get over here and it's like, oh my gosh. If I wouldn't have gone through that, I would not be the person that I am today. If I wouldn't have gone through that, I would not know what I know today. So here's the thing that we gotta do. While we're over here living life forward, we say, I believe, I believe, I believe. I don't care how I feel, I believe. I don't care what it looks like, I believe. I trust that God is taking care of me. I know that I am God's child and I am gonna live from faith to faith to faith to faith to faith to faith and faith is gonna become a habit in my life. And you know what happens when you have the faith habit? Then the fear habit cannot get in. The worry habit cannot get in. The anxiety habit cannot get in. The stress habit cannot get in. You know why? Because you've entered the rest of God. And you frankly don't care what God does or when he does it because you know that his timing will be perfect and whatever he does will be 100% right. Come on, give God praise. From faith to faith to faith to faith to faith to faith to faith. Come on, let's all stand up. So what do we talk about today? Thoughts and words, habits? The dec decisive habits, being decisive? I don't want you to forget. Healthy habits? How many of you are ready to make a commitment to take better care of yourself? Now look, count the cost. Because I'm gonna pray for you on that area before we leave today, because that's so important that you start valuing yourself enough to take care of yourself. <laughs> You're welcome, daughter. <laughs> the happy habit. Woohoo! And the faith habit, from faith to faith to faith to faith. Ho, ho. 
Now tonight we only have three habits, so I get to stretch them out more, and then five tomorrow morning, then our conference will be over. But you'll have 14 new behaviors that will be life-changing to you. I pray in the name of Jesus that every person here would have the wisdom to value themselves, to see how important they are to your plan, God. They may see themselves as unimportant, but they are not unimportant. Otherwise, they wouldn't be here. You have not made any junk, nor have you made any unnecessary things. And you need us. You want to work through us. We represent you. And so I pray, God, that you would give every person here the wisdom to start taking care of themselves. And I pray that you would lead them and bring conviction in areas that need to change. And I know that if they'll step out in faith, the grace will be there to meet them to do whatever they need to do. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you guys. Galatians 5.16 says, But I say, walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. Then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and the desires of the flesh. So I just want to encourage you that while you're farming new habits, it's important for you to stay positive and think about the good thing that you're trying to do instead of thinking about the bad habit that you're trying to break. We always have a tendency to focus on, I need to break this habit, I need to break this habit. But really what we should do is focus on the good thing that God is working in us. Be thankful, God, I thank you that you're working in me. Thank you that you're working this good thing in me and the good will force out the bad. So we have a new book, Making Good Habits, Breaking Bad Habits. I can't imagine anybody who couldn't use the material in this book. So get a copy, buy a couple more and give them to friends. They're gonna appreciate you for doing that. It's a very uplifting, positive approach to how you can farm good habits in your life. God bless you. Once I started taking care of what I had, I started to break my spending habit. As a family, we made the God habit. It's like living in a different house. This has affected every area of my life. Did you know that focusing on developing good habits will help you break the bad ones? Today, we're offering Making Good Habits, Breaking Bad Habits for your donation of any amount. Call us right now, toll free. 1-800-727-9673. Don't miss your chance to see Joyce live. Inspiring worship life-changing teaching. The Joyce Meyer Conference is coming to Hershey, Pennsylvania, August 7th through 9th with worship by Fused Worship. And Toronto, Ontario, August 21st through 23rd with worship by Israel Houghton. All sessions are free. For more information and a complete conference schedule, visit us at joycemeyer.org or call toll-free 1-866-C-JOYCE. No matter who you are, what you did, or what's happened before. God has your comeback already planned, and it's going to be glorious. We've all had times in our lives when things just don't seem to go as we had planned. I want you to know that it's never too late for your fresh start. You can begin again, and I want to show you how. You can begin again. Available now from Joyce Meyer Ministries. Thank you, friends and partners. Together, we're sharing the love of Christ around the world. To find out more, please contact us or visit us online at JoyceMeyer.org. Join us in partnership as we share the love of Christ around the globe. The proceeding was paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.